We're on page 142, nouns have numbers. Uh, nouns and verbs have numbers. That is, they can be singular or plural. Always look to see if the noun, uh, if the nouns used as a subject are singular or plural. And we have a couple of sentences here, but first we're gonna uh, read our uh, instructions. The verb of a sentence must agree with the subject in number. Singular subjects take singular verbs and plural subjects take plural verbs. Most plural subjects are easy to spot uh, because plural nouns usually end in S. So we have our two sentences here. Stars shine brightly. Our subject to this sentence is stars and we see that it's a plural, okay? Uh, we've got our S right there, um, plural stars. Stars shine brightly, okay? So the subject of our sentence is plural, so it is gonna take a singular verb, and we're gonna explain singular verbs here in a minute. Then, the star, uh, singular, shines brightly. So we, we found our subject, we determined that our subject is singular, so we give it a plural verb. Um, verbs are just the opposite of nouns. In nouns, we add an S to make a noun plural, in verbs, we add an S, or there is an S in the verb, and that usually signifies that it's going to be um, singular, okay? So, notice that adding an S to a present verb makes it singular. The singular form of a verb, uh, or of several irregular verbs, also happens to end in S. So we have this uh, chart here, and I'm gonna go ahead and stand over here so you can see it. If you notice our singular verbs, they all have an S in the ending, is, was, does, has. And then our plural verbs don't, okay? Are, were, do, have, okay? And this is gonna be important. Don't let it confuse you. Um, we're, we're gonna practice it as we go on the next page, actually 143, which we'll go over in a minute. Um, you're gonna see how we connect the plural subject with a plural a verb and the singular subject with the singular verb. But let's continue. Uh, in the verb phrase, or in a verb phrase, only the helping verb has to change forms to make the singular verb, um, I'm sorry, to make the verb singular or plural. So we have our, set, uh, our sentence, and here we have a verb phrase, has sailed, okay? Samuel has sailed many times. Our main verb is sailed, our helping verb is has, in this case. Um, we look at our subject, our subject is Samuel. Samuel is singular, so it has to take a singular verb. And there we see it's part of our singular verb list. Samuel has sailed. Now, if you notice, uh, sailed is not gonna change. Even in this next sentence, the boys have sailed many times. I'm, just gonna say, I'm not sure you can see that. Boys is our subject, okay? Boys is plural. And then we have our verb phrase, have sailed. And so the subject, has to agree in number with the verb. And here we see we have a plural verb. Okay, it's one of our, uh, our plural lists. And this is what I was talking about. Notice here, where, when it's singular, we have has. It's got an S on there uh, for the singular subject. But this one, even though this one's plural, it does not have the S. Okay, that's not always true. There are gonna be exceptions, but for the most part, it is true. So we found our plural subject and we've given it a plural verb. What, I, what we need to notice about um, this rule is that in a verb phrase, it's only the helping verb that's gonna change. Notice that sailed remains the same in both of these cases, and it's the helping verb that changes. You're either gonna give it a singular helping verb for a singular subject, or a plural helping verb for a plural subject. And then um, further down uh, in the next chalkboard, I've got some more illustrations, but I'm gonna go ahead and read this first. Compound subjects joined by and take plural verbs. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll you guys over this way. Okay, smooth transition. 